Welcome everyone to the Feeling Lighter podcast by We Shape, where we are shedding old beliefs that no longer serve us one episode at a time. Mm-hmm. I'm here with Dr. Lisa Folden. Tyler's a fun guest on the podcast today. How Hello. are you, everyone? Hey, doing hey. well. Today we're doing a special episode. Uh, we sent out an email to some of our followers and said, what questions does everyone have here? So uh, we have a few questions that we're going to answer today. Awesome. I'm excited about these yeah, because it's like, let's let's talk about like how this is impacting people or some, you know, I just think it's let's connect with our community. Right. So I'm going to get into it here. Um, this uh, this person didn't leave their name. So anonymous. Um how can a physically limited elder person gain enough confidence to engage in a daily workout routine? Mm. That's a good question. Yeah. I know you as a physical yeah. therapist, Dr. Yeah. Folden, like, you know, you, I'm hoping you can shed some insight into this. Yeah, I'll go first on this one. I, I, I see this a lot because I work with people, all age groups, but um, especially if you're older and you've, you know, experienced some changes, right? You've had an injury or you've lost mobility in some way. Um, it can be really scary. And... I do want to validate that fear because it is a healthy fear in some regard because you do want to be safe. Mm -hmm. And so um, what I love about what we get to do on the WeShape platform is, you know, giving people tips and strategies to feel better. But there's always a caveat of but, (laughs) you know, a little asterisk, check in with yourself, talk to your doctor or your physical therapist, because some things that we're working on or we're suggesting, they might unintentionally not be great for you. So I think it's great that this um, listener or this uh, follower is is addressing this concern and like wondering what can I do Um, so safety is is number one one of the ways to kind of create safety is to do things where other people are around that can support you Um, so perhaps if you try something you don't have the best balance someone is there for you Um, you can also create safety around you by having things to hold on to or things to grab onto or you can start from sitting or lying down. You can start wherever you are, um, but really it's just about gaining the consistency, trying new things and doing things that maybe interest you, but being safe and mindful about the environment with which you're in which you're doing it and who's around to support you and help you. So again, if you have to start sitting down, if you have to start lying down, you can do things that that suit where you are at this point in the journey and you can continue to grow and build from there. But I absolutely encourage you to, to find community, find support, work with a professional, join the WeShape mm-hmm. <laughs> family um, and make sure that you're doing things that uh, make sense for where you are in your physical development at that time. I yeah. think you're um, I think you're nailing it um, and I want to add one more thing to that because I or just an acknowledgement mm-hmm. I think that kind of piggybacking on what you said around it's actually natural mm-hmm. because I think what happens and I don't know if you see this in your practice but people feel guilt and shame and like um, devalued around right. the fact that their body is getting older and can't do as many things or they're afraid of getting injured or I'm coming from an injury and going into that. So I just want to like also maybe suggest like grace and kindness and like that that fear is okay, just like you said. So I'm so grateful that you said that because I think we just want to instantly beat ourselves up. And I also think um, that I would love for people to think about how we hold the elderly community in our collective culture mm-hmm. that we all share. That's and, a great point. And because I do think that um, there's this thing in our culture, I don't know if it's like the anti-aging movement that's making this worse, <laughs> or I, I don't know, but I sometimes sense that we're not holding the elderly people in our community in as, as much of a high value as I would hope that people would. Like, right. and. I know that our bodies are going to change and we're going to have physical uh, capabilities that we maybe didn't have before, but every human being is so valuable and so worthy. And I particularly find, I, I just, the elderly community offers such infinite wisdom. Right. And I just, I, I want to encourage all of us to, to hold this piece of our community maybe in a different way than we have traditionally held. Yeah, I I, want to piggyback on this. You said the word safety a lot of times. I think that's really important for people to cultivate that safety within. Mm -hmm. And I think overall, one of the biggest stigmas in the health and fitness industry in general is that we're describing workouts from this place of like treadmill and like ride the bike and like do squats. And like there's this awareness of these things. And then we think, okay, well, I should go do those things in order to get back to where I need to go. 
And I think it's really important that we redefine fitness and we take movement patterns of the human body and we recognize that when we move our bodies well, our bodies tend to feel well, at least it's the safest way. There is a safer way to move our bodies. Yeah. And I think a lot of people need to do a lot less in the right. beginning. Yeah. Right. Like if you're thinking to yourself, like, I want to be able to walk up a flight of stairs pain free. Well, we're not standing you on one foot and balancing you and, and working single leg drills. Yeah. Right. Maybe we sit down in a chair. We push our heel into the ground for three seconds and feel what it feels like to fire our quad and our glute mm -hmm. and just do that for 60 seconds and then call it a day. Right. And then we slowly graduate, slowly sophisticating the movement, the challenge that the movement provides to your body. So that way you're getting um, you're starting at this really simple risk, less risky exposure. And then mm -hmm. when it feels right, you move to the next step. Right. Mm -hmm. This is like the whole entire architecture behind the we shape program it's based on motor pattern progressions yeah. and the easiest way to think of a motor pattern progression is to think of an infant going from being unable to do anything to being able to run yeah. right and so what is what does this infant do well it lays on its back mm -hmm. it lifts its head it activates its core it rolls to its belly mm -hmm. it comes to a kneeling position it crawls so it's activating contralateral movement patterns it learns how to stand then it starts walking then it starts running right. every one of these steps is critical in the gate, the run of that human being, mm -hmm. being a, 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 a gate that's not going to injure them. Uh -huh. And what we've actually found now is that when you skip steps like that in infancy, you develop motor pattern um, adaptations that could be unfavorable to you as an adult. Yep. And we have to take you back to, can they <laughs> kneel? Can they crawl? Can they stabilize the midline, right? Yeah. So um, I know that's a fancy pants way to do this. But I think we need to stop thinking about fitness as like, running and yeah, the jumping and, level and of, like yeah. machines yeah. and what like What I hear you saying is mm -hmm. that yeah. there's immense value in getting back to simplistic movement patterns yeah. and that the reason why we think we have to be the runner in order to find exercise valuable is a conditioning. It's actually not true. Right. Yeah. And toxic exercise culture tells us no pain, no gain, burn maximum yeah. calories, mm -hmm. be a marathon runner. Like that that that's not the whole picture yeah. and um actually what you're saying is find the value and find the worth in in being okay with starting with very foundational things and that actually those may serve us even better it yeah, does well. so I mean, it, in the it, long happens, yeah. it happens to everyone like right yeah. now i'm doing some coaching with a coach that's working me through some um, hand balancing routines and one of the things i'm always humbled by when i work with a coach is they often take me to a step like further back than I think I need to go. Right. And then when I'm doing it, it's boring. But I'm like, wait, this is the foundation. So do you want to build your house on sand or do you want to build your house on stone? Uh oh, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That part. So do less, do less. It should feel good. It should feel easy. It yeah. should feel doable. And it should provide some sense of connection with your body and then learn the next step and make it very gradual. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be like scary or difficult. Yeah. And I think what we know now from this conversation uh, is that it's not going to be quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this process will take time, and so we have to have a little patience in it. So. But can I say something about that? One thing I see as a pattern is people in our community, they do too much too fast. Yeah. And I call this the one step forward, one step back game. So for a year, for 10 years, whatever it may be, you take one step forward, you hurt yourself, things don't feel as good, you take one step backwards. Mm -hmm. And so even though it's slow, if you do this slowly mm -hmm. and you build the strong foundation, you're putting one step in front of the other. Yeah. And you sure. actually find out that, wait a second, because I took five steps back, I actually was able to take 10 steps forward. Mm -hmm. And I did it without causing injuries to my body and while gaining strength, flexibility, balance, and coordination. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. And I shameless plug, like if, if you're listening to the podcast and you're not aware that WeShape has a product that meets your physical needs mm -hmm. we do yeah. um so go check us out at weshape.com forward slash podcast and you no, can it's weshape.com forward slash free oh and we you can changed try it, for it free don't listen to me <laughs> um two week free trial but the the point is is like this is our philosophy behind movement is mm -hmm. to go slower to connect with your body to get the foundational movement patterns there like there's value in that and it's really counterintuitive to what every most of the narrative and the most of the products in the market tell you so sure. most people get bored with it mm -hmm. they're like oh this is boring and i'm like let's do boring for a little yeah. while boring is mm -hmm. actually good when we're talking about 
fitness and movement. So. Yeah, change the change the station on our product. Ch- change mm-hmm. the music. Don't change the um, <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> right. Um, okay, we're gonna go on to the next question. Uh, what is one applicable thing that you recommend to establish an exercise routine? Ooh, you want to start, Tyler? Hmm. One applicable thing. What are the, What do you think the user is asking for related? that question probably i'm thinking it it sounds like one thing like one foundational thing or something they need to apply in order to have like consistent yeah what is one easily applicable thing that you recommend to establish an exercise routine this is lynn from virginia thanks lynn health yeah so i'm really grateful to to be able to even address this yeah um, but I, I know motivation comes up a lot here at WeShape in terms of how do I stay motivated to do your, you know, your, your movement program. Mm-hmm. And so this is adding a layer of like, I need to acknowledge that my depression, you know, really is, is getting in the way of this sometimes. Yeah. So I don't know how, does anyone want to take that? Yeah. I, I want to say first that, um, again, uh, agreeing with what you're saying, Katie, like, thank you for your vulnerability and sharing this. Um, depression is real. It impacts a lot of us. And, you know, we aren't mental health professionals. So I think it's really important that if you acknowledge that you have something going on, that you're doing what's in your power to seek the resources and the support. If that's mental health therapy, counseling, like a group situation, whatever it is, um, because that is something that needs to be addressed. But having yeah. said that, the body and the brain are connected. Right. And movement can actually really benefit and decrease some of the symptoms of depression in many cases. So sometimes the motivation is from understanding what the outcome is and what you want out of it. If you're struggling with depression, or something else and you know that certain movements can actually improve your mood and help you then that can be your motivation to continue and it's really about thinking about um, making these these movement options like digestible and simple and quick and short and something that feels good so with a lot of my clients it's like what's what's going to bring you a little joy what's Mm going to make you feel happy we don't have to look at staying consistent with exercise as meaning going to the gym every day at the same time and, and working on these specific machines. That's not what movement has to be for you. So if you can find ways to incorporate joy and happiness and things that make you feel happier and lighter and more excited about life, then that make that your movement. And that could just be a walk around your block. That could be meeting up with a friend that you really like, you know, and spending time outside. That could be, you know, tons of different things to incorporate moving your body, but also the component of happiness and joy or peace if it's meditation or stretching. But don't don't um, box yourself in to think that consistency means doing this one thing the same way every time, traditional fitness. And, and you know, if I'm not doing that, it's not enough. You can make movement, exercise, different things for you, and they, and they can feed different parts of you. It doesn't just have to be to benefit your physical self. It can be to, to benefit your mental health. Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the most important things you said there was lower the bar. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) we get trapped in this narrative that if I don't do an hour workout, that's, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be that way. Like the, I love the example of calling a friend and walking. Mm -hmm. That is movement. That, that counts. Like we, we got to lower the bar sometimes for ourselves. We are way too hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you acknowledging, yeah, we are not mental health professionals. We do acknowledge the benefit of movement and the connection that it has on the brain, but that we always encourage people to seek support in their community and, and find people who can, who are experts in this. So we'll, we'll continuously reiterate that, but lower the bar, uh, find something that actually sounds like it would be fun oftentimes yeah. that can be with another person yeah right absolutely um the other thing sometimes i tell people in our community is join a we connect call yeah. i know that that's not um that's a that's a call and not necessarily like an exercise thing but that's okay yeah. like join the call tap in with your community yeah we find motivation through community yeah so absolutely yeah. join yeah. a call mm-hmm. so I, I feel like this one's a tough one for me to comment on to a certain degree because when someone says the word depression it's like it's a big term and i don't know what they mean right like someone might be depressed because they're having really hard circumstances in their life and Mm -hmm. in that circumstance like seek support 
yeah. seek support, seek friendship, ask for help, like all those things. And somebody might be depressed in more of a neurochemical perspective, right. in which case, like, again, seek help. But it's going to be a different type of help mm -hmm. where it's not so much like you need a community to hold you while things are really challenging. But maybe you need an expert who can help recommend things to you that can change the depression. Because, right. you know, when you're depressed and you're tying that to motivation, it's like, I don't even know if I'd worry about the word motivation there. I think mm -hmm. I would just worry about, like, how do we work on something related to the depression itself? Right. And that, in turn, by removing that, frees up more space for motivation. Yeah. And I think the second aspect of this, too, and this is, I want to disconnect this from depressions. I, I don't want it to be connected in the same way, but I've been fascinated with this motivation thing for like a couple years now, ever since we started producing workouts that were all about helping you feel better in your body. Right. Because it's really easy to say, this workout's going to give you, lo you lose weight and belly fat, and people want to do that because society has agreed that that become, makes you become more valuable. But when you're like, hey, your body's going to feel great, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I'll go do the program that you know promises more, yeah. right? promises the things I think I want. And I think this word motivation is is really misleading because and we've talked about this numerous times on the podcast. I think people think of motivation and what oftentimes comes up is is like fuel for them to do something they don't want to do. Ooh, that's you know really what I mean? Yeah. They're like they're like, oh, I, I don't want to exercise because it's hard and it's difficult. And so, like, I have to find fuel. And where is that fuel at? Is it self-hatred? Is it whatever it may be? And sometimes we find that and we push forward through it, but that that in turn causes that same one step forward, one step back. We burn mm. out because it's rooted in negative feelings. And I think the most important thing is to recognize, like, this is your body. This is the body you're going to live in, yep. right? You're not getting another one. You're not getting another <laughs> one, right? And you can do simple things to start caring for your body. Mm -hmm. And you probably brush your teeth, right? And you do that because you want to take care of your teeth. You don't want to have cavities. You want to have teeth that you can use for the rest of your life. But how often do you think about what you're doing for your shoulder right. and your hip and your ankle and your back and all these other things, right? And if we can just flip the narrative from I need to find motivation to do something that I don't want to do because it's really just rooted in self-punishment to I'm worth it, Yeah. right? Like I'm worth or taking care of. Or I get to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I get to. Mm -hmm. Or like, wow, this body carried me my whole life. Let me do something for it, right. right? So if it can shift the mentality away from like this grueling routine to like, hey, go stretch your hamstrings for 60 seconds each side and call it a day right. and, and just feel good, you know, mm -hmm. and then build on that. Right, I think that's such a better take approach. Take the pressure off. Yeah, take the pressure off Jeez. of all these things. So yeah, I there's just, enough I, pressure. <laughs> I think if we're feeling unmotivated, it's likely that our perception of fitness is negative, and yeah. it's negative because it's rooted in the desire to change self. Right. And if we change the perception to I get to or I I, I deserve to mm -hmm. take care of my body to feel good in my body, then we 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 just do it the same way we brush our teeth. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and we pick things based on what we know is beneficial or that we really enjoy. Right. It's not just yeah. I gotta go do this thing. So but yeah, I love you that. You mentioned that earlier. Like yeah. we show so many different movements on our social media feeds, mm -hmm. and the intention isn't for everybody to do every movement. Exactly. The intention yeah. is for you to try something out, listen to your body, and if your body goes, oh, I love that, yeah. then you'll be motivated to do to it again. Do it. You yeah. don't need to create this like motivation from any other place. And let's be mm -hmm. real, a lot of exercise programs are rooted and use this program to make your body smaller yeah uh that <laughs> we, we just listen to the other episodes this <laughs> season and you'll see that like that is that is that path is harmful mm -hmm. and so kind of again what tyler is saying connect with your body and and lower the bar and find joy and there's so many other paths like there's right. infinite number of paths we can go on as to why we are moving our body or thinking about our body in a different way and making it smaller does not have to be the one we go down it's the one we've all kind of gone down right. but it doesn't have to be that one anymore so i just want to make one more comment on this like i say the word you're worth it to people a lot and i just really want people to feel that like in a really deep way because i think that so many of us especially women in our world we're just taught like our value is in what we do for other mm -hmm. and so we 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 waste all of our energy for the day doing things for everyone else and then when we think of doing something for ourselves we're like i don't have anything left yeah. mm -hmm. right and feeling worth it is saying no i i have to take care of me mm -hmm. like i want to take care of me i deserve to take care of me mm -hmm. and i think people need to do that and you look at the mirror and say dude, I deserve to give myself 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20, 30, whatever you yeah. need, right? And make that a priority, right? And because it's so, easy, it's so easy <laughs> to give it all away to everybody else right. yeah. and then feel really sad that you don't have anything left in the tank. Yeah. You yeah. gotta give yourself something because you're worth it. I like that. 
That's your motivation. You're worth it. Yeah, you're worth it. it. You are worth it. Okay, I think we have time for one more. Um, This is from Dawn. She says, how do I get over the fear of hurting myself more? From injury or surgeries, getting back into shape. So there's a couple couple things I want to address here. And I know that, you know, Dr. Lisa being a physical therapist, Tyler being a movement expert and and struggling with a lot of surgeries and injuries. <laughs> we, I, I know you have Allergy. a lot to say <laughs> about this. Um, yeah. But I think I want to start with this idea of back into shape. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, do you, Lisa, do you have something you want to say about that? You know, I don't. I, I understand, I think, what the uh, the writer of this question is, is asking, is this idea of getting, you know, maybe back to a previous physical level of performance that they had in the, in the past or perhaps back to a different body that they had from the past. That's sometimes what people mean by getting mm. in shape. And I just think, you know, we want to clarify here that um, it's it's it makes sense. Either either road makes sense. It makes sense that you might want to be in a different body, right? Because yeah. the society we live in, it also makes sense that you might want to restore some strength or motion or balance or coordination or agility or something you've had in the past. And there's nothing wrong with working toward being better in some way physically, whatever, however you define that. But I think it gets a little tricky when we start to view being in shape as looking a certain way or having a certain body type or being a certain weight or, you know, size or whatever. And so just remember that you don't have to be in any specific shape <laughs> to mm-hmm. uh, to feel better in your body, to move better, uh, to improve your balance and strength and flexibility. Your body doesn't actually have to physically look any different in order to achieve that. So that's what I want to say as far as the Yeah, I didn't know if they piece. meant like, oh, I had an injury and yeah. I had strength or flexibility here and I've lost that right. or I'm achieving an aesthetic. So we're, we're trying to speak to, I think, both sides there. Like yeah. it's, it's absolutely like if you had a physical capability, you had an injury or a surgery and you're, I want to get back to that a little bit. I, I miss that flexibility or that right. strength. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's worthwhile endeavor to kind of, let's talk, let's talk about how we can support that. Absolutely. Um, if we're talking more about like, I want my body to look a certain way, maybe a past version of myself, that's a different story. And mm-hmm. we understand that we live in a world that tells us that that is the way. Yeah. And, um, I hope that whoever wrote this question would be curious about some of the other episodes. Cause we do a lot of kind of deeper diving into food freedom and mm-hmm. body peace and yeah. there's a lot of great episodes on this so but kind of going back to like the physical side after injury or mm-hmm. surgery Tyler I know you've experienced a lot of this yeah. um, so maybe you could speak a little bit more to yeah. this question I think Don. people need to recognize that your body is just this amazing amazing you know I'll call it a machine but it's this amazing organic machine right. and most of the reactions that our body has um, is rooted in tens of thousands of years of us not living our current lifestyle. And so 500 years ago, 1,000 years, 10,000 years ago, when you tore a ligament or when you created an injury in your body, um, your body would basically give a little bit more energy above and below the joint, right? So let's pretend I tear my ACL thousand years ago. It's likely that my ankle's going to get a lot stronger, my quad and my hips going to get a lot stiffer, right? And then the knee joint's going to lack as much flexibility. It's, it's your body's way of protecting you. It's mm-hmm. a survival mechanism. But now we can put a new ACL back in there. Right. But your body doesn't know this yet, all right? So the fear that you have around an injury, this is the biological adaptation to keep you safe. Right. And that's something that we have to learn how to shed. And I think this is really important because, as Katie mentioned, I've had several knee surgeries, one on the left and four on the right. And um, I remember even recently after the last knee surgery I had that was actually rather successful. There was a lot of things that I would do and my muscles wouldn't participate. Mm. And I remember being like, what is going on here? And I just kept trying to like, you know, use this machine and do this thing and blah, blah, blah. And I was talking to someone um, who's a little bit of a, a, like a, I guess you'd call like a mindset coach of mine. And she says to me, have you tried talking to your knee? And I was (laughs) like, what? I'm sorry, what do you mean? And she's like, have you talked to it? And just said, like, I trust you. And I was like, maybe you can just give me an example real quick. And so she gives me the example. She says, try this, go right knee, You've been really hurt. You've had a lot of injuries. And you're very afraid to do some of these things that you think might hurt you again. But you're fixed now, and it's safe. 
Mm. and you're okay. Did that help? And I started talking to my right knee when I would do these movements. Wow. And it made a significant difference in my confidence yeah. to be able to do those movements. And so I know this sounds corny, but I think that I've seen it time and time again. People have a, a genuine fear. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they think it's from their mind. Understandably. They mm -hmm. think it's from their mind, but it's stored in their body. Mm -hmm. And so if we want to get rid of that fear, A, baby steps, like we said in the very beginning of this podcast, don't just jump in and do the thing that you want to do. Yeah. Do the baby steps in a safe way that allow you to build upon each other until you get to where you want to go. And while you're doing it, encourage your nervous system to go into that relaxing state. Because mm -hmm. you'll notice it. You'll go to bend and, you'll, and you'll feel that tension. Yeah. And so pause and, oh, you're safe. Mm -hmm. You're safe. Your body's safe. And it was just such a game changer for me to say, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You're safe. You, you acknowledge it, you were injured, yeah. but now you're fixed. And it's like, it's the okay. power of affirmations, right? Yeah. It's like saying the things that maybe we don't believe yet, but we, we want to believe, yeah. and our body is responding to that. Like the Absolutely. universe responds to the same thing. So I did not know you were gonna go there with that I answer. Didn't I think that's a great answer, <laughs> yeah, it was, brilliant. It was, it was, it's not mine, I should say, this is not mine. I was just so, again, when, when she told me that, I was like, I'm sorry, you want me to talk to my knee? And I was like, hey, I'll try anything. Let's give it a shot. And sure enough, it made a huge difference. And I've actually shared that with a lot of We Shape members now when they would be scared to go up and down stairs and stuff like that. I'm like, well, let's back it up to this baseline movement that can help facilitate your goal. And while you're doing that, let's build trust. Mm. So instead of it just being like, let me, let me cancel the fear, like, how are you supposed to cancel the fear if your right. body's still afraid? Yeah. Right? Again, lower the bar. Yeah. Mm. And build that connection, <laughs> mind to body. Build that right. connection. I, tr I trust you. Yeah. Right? So helpful. Good, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, the body's just doing what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And just offering yourself, gosh, we always, even on the physical side, we always come back to ki self kindness, kindness, compassion, uh, lowering patience, the bar. Yeah. Trust. You're not going to get there by saying, you stupid knee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you giving out on me again? You yeah. Know? So. Wow. wow. Well, I hope we can do another episode someday when we can do more questions because we had a lot of people write in. Yeah. Um, but I think we we have all, that's all the time we have today. So thank you both for being here. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Yeah. And you can always uh, email us your questions if you have any as well at podcast at we shape dot com. We hope to do another Q&A episode at some point. So if you have any questions, send them our way. Awesome. Take care, everyone. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Boom.